Dr. Mark Kynan said, we know that uric acid plays a major role in fat storage, insulin resistance, and other metabolic and chronic degenerative diseases that are driving illness and death in our country. Let's take a look at the role of uric acid in metabolic function. I wanted to share some of my thoughts with you after listening to a really great podcast with Dr. Perlmuter. His book is all about the effects of uric acid in the body. And when we hear the word uric acid, we often associate it with gout or rheumatoid arthritis, joint pain, uh, kidney stones, things like that. But the truth is uric acid is associated with almost every other chronic illness on the planet right now, which are rampant, as you well know if you're in the medical profession. Um, we have things like obesity, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, um, diabetes, autoimmune disease, and leaky gut. What's important to remember here is that fructose that comes from fruit sugars triggers the production of uric acid in the body. And that uric acid triggers fat storage, weight gain, and all sorts of downstream metabolic dysfunction. In other words, this doesn't just come from glucose, but also from fructose. So most people on a low-carb diet are very conscious of their glucose consumption, their blood sugar, their blood glucose levels. But we also want to realize it's not just glucose triggering insulin that causes fat storage. It is fructose that triggers uric acid that also causes fat storage and all sorts of downstream metabolic problems. The bottom line is we now know that fructose drives metabolic dysfunction and that metabolic dysfunction is at the core of the most dreaded common diseases of our time. So we're not just suffering from a problem with excess insulin and excess glucose, we're suffering from excess fructose converting to uric acid and causing metabolic dysfunction. Like a bear, perhaps you would eat a lot of fruit before wintertime, and the whole reason bears do this, and humans probably did too, as fruit ripened in the summer, people ate lots of fruit, and then there was it was dormant in the winter, and that's when we would burn the body fat we stored based on triggering of uric acid. So when you have fructose in fruit, it triggers the production of uric acid, and uric acid triggers the storage of fat. So we're very familiar, most of us in the low-carb world, that glucose triggers insulin and insulin triggers fat storage, but many people don't realize that fructose is a major trigger also of fat storage, and this is what Dr. Perlmuter reveals. So let's take a listen to some of the key points that he makes. We all grew up in the medical field looking at uric acid through the lens of gout and perhaps kidney stones. End of story. And if you went to your doctor and had your blood values done, Typically, it would contain anywhere between 12 and 20 different parameters. And generally, uric acid would be included through the lens or in the context of gout risk or having kidney stone risk. And now we recognize that uric acid is far from this inert metabolite that might be related to gout, that it is a central player. It's gone from, there's a title actually of a journal article, uh, Uric Acid in Metabolic uh, Syndrome from innocent bystander to central player. So we recognize that it is exceedingly active in playing a role for the host of metabolic issues that threaten our health, whether it's high blood pressure, uh, fat deposition, keeping fat locked up, gluconeogenesis or the creation of blood sugar in your body, insulin resistance, oxidative stress, inflammation, nitric oxide inhibition, all of these mechanisms are now associated with uh, uric acid and were all good things in the day that becoming insulin resistant, which we now, every, every guest on your show who talks about metabolic health will say, we have to do everything we can to not become insulin resistant. I mean, Dr. Hyman's written books on this topic, uh, Dr. Uh, Lustig as well, many people, myself included. And yeah, it's true that these days we should do everything we can not to be insulin resistant, but for 99.99% of our time on this planet, being insulin resistant, having blood sugar higher than what we consider normal was a very powerful survival tactic. 
And we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the fact that we humans, by virtue of our thrifty genome, have a real strong predisposition to raise our blood sugars, to make body fat, to increase our blood sugar, to make more uh, blood sugar in our bodies to uh, power the brain. We can avoid the two things that threatened our ancestors, starvation and predation. Uh, you know, we've always been at risk of not having food, and we've always been at risk for being eaten by something else in the forest, right? Those aren't really risks that we encounter these days. We're not, you know, we're not at risk for having another animal come along and, and eat us anymore. Through the years of our evolution, we had some unique changes in our genome that paved the way for us to be very thrifty as it relates to the calories that we've consumed, that we've always banked calories in the form of fat so that we would have a hedge against starvation. And yet, we're triggering that mechanism to make more fat day in and day out, you know, to the extent that a third of American adults is obese eight years from now. 50% of American adults will be classified as not just being overweight, but obese. And fructose and glucose are totally different molecules. We're set up to gain weight. We're set up to make more blood sugar by virtue of this innate mechanism. And that is how we trigger uric acid production that is the danger signal. It tells the body, get ready. You know, there's a really powerful study from 2016 that looked at 42,000 men and 48,000 women. A big study, and they showed that those in the group, they followed these people over eight years, those in the group who had the highest level of uric acid had about a 16% increased risk of what is called all-cause mortality. What does that mean? Dying from absolutely anything. But more specifically, those uh, their risk for uh, cardiovascular death in the group with the highest uric acid was increased by 39%. So we have to take this really seriously. Liquid fructose will right away uh, raise uric acid. I mean, that's what, like I said, that's what it's designed to do. That's how it plays out in your physiology. That's what, um, you know, that's the signal. You're suddenly eating a bunch of fruit to get ready for winter to make fat. And boy, that, that mechanism is activated. Uh, the alarm system is lit up. The board is all on lights. Winter's coming. We've got to make fat. You shift your entire, entire metabolism. Everybody comes on board. All the little cells in your body are starting to get dialed in that winter's coming. And clearly, we need to do everything we can to, uh, you know, to turn that off because there's no need. If you think about a bear hibernating, it would eat buckets full of berries, let's say, blueberries, wild blackberries, and it would put on a lot of body fat. And then what happens when the bear is hibernating over several weeks or months during the wintertime, it's going to burn off that fat. Okay, that's what we do when we're doing a fasting mimicking diet or even fasting. So we're really um, triggering our body to go into a fat burning mode, and which is, has many, many health benefits, helps to... Um, clear out old dead mutated DNA. It's very detoxifying for the body to do this. It's called autophagy or mitophagy where the body actually goes in and recycles and repairs dead useless material. And this is a very good thing. We do this through fasting, right? Because when you fast, your body is um, reliant upon fat for fuel. Um, when you're no longer putting in carbohydrates for fuel or any, if you reduce your calories, it's this has the same effect, or if you stop eating entirely, it has the same effect. Also, what has the same effect is a ketogenic diet, which is also known as a fasting mimicking diet because you get the benefits of fasting without actually starving and, or, or not eating, right? And so if you don't have any fat to burn, then you have to, you have to eat something, right? And so if you want to trigger this autophagy and mitophagy where the body's repairing itself, recycling cells um, and, and using them to make new cells, you have to eat something, and that's why the ketogenic diet is such a key piece of metabolic restoration and also weight loss because it's triggering these detoxification pathways. So fruit once in a while is fine, especially even on a carnivore or low-carbohydrate diet, but the amount of fructose that people are eating today is not so great, and it's really creating a huge epidemic of chronic illness, autoimmunity, obesity, diabetes, 
the list goes on. The point I want to make here is that lots and lots of fruit juice and, and high fructose corn syrup in sweetened beverages and also sauces and dressings and all of these other things that we buy off the shelf in the store are destroying the metabolism. They are triggering the production of uric acid in the body, triggering not only fat storage, but also joint pain, gout, kidney problems, all sorts of other things. Metabolic syndrome, you could say. And at the bottom of that is glucose and fructose. Okay, so I want to leave you with that. I highly recommend that you listen to this entire podcast. It's excellent. I love Dr. Perlmuter, and I just wanted to um, shed some light on some of these key points that he makes in this podcast. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend. Thanks so much.